What's up, Prime Fam? What's going on, guys? Uh, Prime Saturday. We're in the gym. Everyone's going heavy. Uh, I got squats. I got deadlifts and I got bench press. SBD day, strength based day. I got doubles on squat, bench, and dead for my top sets. RP7 for the uh, squat and the bench, and RP6 today on the deadlift. And then I have some back off volume work, uh, sets of four, I believe, for my back off sets on all the lifts. Um, I want to give uh, some tips today. I'm trying to film more for you guys on YouTube. So this stuff's going to be a lot more fast paced and I'm not going to have as nice visuals and stuff, but I just want to fucking put out content right now. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw that little rant the other day on my Instagram story. I'm really sick and fucking tired of the powerlifting community, the fitness industry. It's a bunch of people like ass kissing, lick, licking each other's asses to get to the top. They're like fucking gnawing at each other, collabing with whoever, selling out. They all have discount codes for RP. They all have discount codes for Herb Strong. Everyone's fucking posting little, uh, someone else's Instagram story posts on their stories. It's just like a bunch of people who I feel are not adding to the community. And I'm honestly tired of it. So I'm doing my best to try to push out more content. The truth is I actually get really pulled away from the community because I hate most of it. Uh, the, the fitness industry is really unique, but I'll save the rest of this rant for another time. We're gonna keep this positive and informative um, today on squats, I had doubles building up. A pragmatic tip for you guys, there's two here. One, take your fucking time, especially on heavy days building up, work into a good squat pattern. I think people just kind of warm up by saying, oh, my, my hips feel warm, my legs feel warm, you know, I'm doing sets all the way up, and they, they just do it really linear without thought. I'm thinking position. I've said this before, I will take a plate, like one red plate, uh, so the kilo plates here being 165 with my squat bar, and then 275 after that. I'll take that for like three sets each. Today I did that, I went 275 for a couple sets, and then I went up to uh, 385 next, and that fell off because I've been dealing with some hip bursitis I'm trying to work around, so I went back down to 275, got into a better squat pattern, and then built all the way back up with zero pain. I took my time, and this not only helps me really gauge my body's capability and get in tune with how I'm feeling and moving on the day for better performance, but it also doesn't tire you out, don't be afraid of that. But thirdly, it allows me to really gauge my RPEs better. And that's what I want to talk about today is your RPEs are very individual to you. There's so many factors that come, in, that come into selecting an RPE. For instance, a good example of this is someone like myself or like my client Derek, we're both taller lifters with really, like not really long femurs. Uh, Derek's femurs are kind of average size, but he has a long range of motion, especially at the depth he hits. His rep strength is a lot lower than his maximal 1RM strength. So a good example here to kind of demo this is someone like Sean Noriega. I believe his best squat ever is 661 in the gym and his best squat on platforms around 650 or so. He hit something like that at the Arnold, but he's done 595. I believe this for six reps and that was like sub failure. I think it was like RP eight or nine or so. Derek, he's never even touched 595 for that many reps. I think his best ever was a triple at about RP seven or so. So his rep strength is matched with Sean. However, Derek has squatted 705 for a double and he squatted 689 in competition for a really easy single. And uh, his, his actual 1RM is much higher uh, by a good amount. And this is because his rep strength really gets nerfed by his range of motion. On really lanky, taller guys, it's really hard for us to do reps. Uh, same thing with me, and I've been like a little bitch in my head lately. I've been comparing my numbers too much and getting like, like it's a good thing to be competitive when you see guys out there on, on Instagram and everyone getting stronger, but I gotta remember to only be competitive enough but still control my variables. And I've been like letting my emotion rate my RPs too much and, and overshooting, and I gotta remember this for myself that my rep strength just does not hold up that much. I can do one RMs all day. My best squat ever is 620, but today I've only built up to 527 for a double at like RP seven and it was pretty fucking hard most guys are squatting as much as me can get up to the mid fives for reps on reps but i gotta remember that that's not me and it's kind of weak shit it's, it's honestly like bitch shit to get like insecure about that and be like oh someone else squatted more i need to match that i gotta do what's best for me i gotta control my variables so when you're selecting your rps select based on how you're truly feeling Bar speed can be very deceptive. I know all you guys always think my RPs are undershot. They're not, guys. Like, my bar speed is really explosive, but it kills me out. You'll see this, like, even on my one, uh, one RM max attempts. Back when I first squad 551 in competition, flew out of the hole and just got fucking stuck halfway. For me, it's all about stability and, and really 
clearing my sticking point. So I hit really hard. Is there some guys can just grind through their ranges of motion and they got shorter limb lengths. They're a little bit shorter in stature, stubbier femur. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep warming up. Uh, I got deadlifts next. Well, actually I got the rest of my squat back down. Then I got deadlifts next. I'm gonna be talking a bunch today. I'm putting out content. I'm fucking tired of these weak motherfuckers on Instagram and on YouTube putting out bullshit, weak ass shit. Shit that's just like oversaturated stuff you already know. You always learn something new on my channel. No one can argue that. I got the best channel on YouTube. Changed my fucking mind. Hi. Hi. What do you have today, Luis? What do you have on squats? I uh, see. I got 385 for a triple at RP8. So you had a triple at eight, right? Yeah, I did. Did you overshoot it? Yeah, it's hard to say. A little, it's hard to say. We on deadlifts uh, so far so good what is this Four, 484 yeah 484 are you sure bro those plates look small what why, why aren't you using these why aren't you using the bumpers we don't use cheater plates around here is it cheater plates these are cheater plates why are they cheater plates they're fake they're fake these they do nothing. look fake they're fake okay all right so you're gonna get this for 10 reps at six yeah 10 hopefully. reps at six that's what i'm hoping for yeah. okay
What'd you do differently there? I opened Com my knees up. You what? I opened my knees up. <laughs> I like the simplistic answer. Yeah. You spread that tank. Spread the tank. Yeah, just gotta open it up. No, so why is that advantageous when we open up? It gets you into a more upright position. Gives you better leverage to actually, you know, get the bar off the floor. Yeah, especially when you slack ball like you yeah. do. Good shit! Woo! It's, they couldn't see it. That was really awkward. Okay, Mr. Sandrew, who's sponsored by Herb Strong, the nipple rubber. Do you put Herb Strong on your nipples to reduce inflammation? Before? Oh yeah. yeah, it's because like, because I'm taking so much like test, and like I'm not Stop. taking, I'm not taking enough like estrogen or something. So like, he's not yeah, on steroids. Yeah, so like, you know, got like the man titties just like, popping in. I mean, I'm in the 120s, so kind of like, you know, like I'm already fat enough. So it's like, oh no, he doesn't have man titties. He's just fat. But no. So today I have a triplet eight. You were smart because you racked the weight when it was yeah, a double. Yeah, <laughs> because like a dumbass on my second rep, I lost balance, and I didn't want to overshoot, so I racked it. That's the smart thing to do. Huh? No, fuck overshooting. Fuck overshooting. Stay yeah. in the pocket, you gotta stay. See these fucking pockets? Got fucking stay in them. <laughs> uh, afterwards, I had a three by five on one set left. But I have a three by five with around four sixty three. But uh, top so wait, six. I'm afraid the music drowned you out. You said you had a triple at eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah triple at eight. And then I have a three by five following afterwards. Now, okay. for the top triple at eight, you might be wondering why are we using different rep ranges? Uh, why can't we just do fives all the time? Or why can't you just do a top set of five and then back off fives? Well, top set of three at eight, it's heavier. Um, you get used to heavier stimulus, increase fitness if you don't fuck up and overshoot. But, <laughs> like me. But, anyways, um, the reason why we structure it that way is so one, we can increase fitness. And then two, with the back offs, three by fives, different rep range, you can get solid volume. Um, your top sets are going to be more varied throughout the week, just to be pushing fitness. Sometimes fatigue is high, sometimes fatigue is low, and fitness is high, so we can capitalize on that. But one thing for sure, your volume should be like, it should be structured, and it should be controlled. You should always be able to yep. get in good volume, because volume dictates the magnitude of... Adaptation! Yeah! yeah! Okay, do your work. Down, stand ups, I can't breathe because five reps is go. Oh, shit. So, like Andrew was saying, uh, that kid's really smart. He fucks around a lot, but he's gonna be a good coach someday. Our top sets are more for fitness. The back off works that base strength, that volume work. So, a lot of the times when I'm undulating through a protocol, there's a linear fashion we're gonna follow where it gets a little bit heavier each week, but we control those back downs a lot more and they're always a lot more volume inducive. The top sets are gonna be lower reps. So today, on squats, I had a double at RP7. Now I got some back off work. I got uh, sets of five for the back off at 445, which I believe is 72%. I got two sets of five, and I go on to demos. I get a lot out of a little bit of volume. Again, that long range of motion kills me out on squats a lot. And there's some more reasons behind that, but I'll talk about that in a sec. Work around that hip. I got some hip pain. I'm trying to move around. That's why I paused the last one, but getting the work done. What you got? Huh? What do you have today? Oh, uh, triple at eight. Triple at eight, and then what? Back off fives? Probably. 
Yeah, I need to get back off five. We'll check in a second. What kind of jumps are you taking on bench press? Uh, like five pounds only. Yeah, super set with Cheez-Its cheese and chips. <laughs> What we got going on in there? Fuck, focus. Fuck this camera. It's like a thousand dollar camera and like a thousand dollar lens. You can't even fucking focus. I know I have a pony mouth. Everyone reminds me in the comment section. Okay, what have we done? What have you discovered with your bench press arch style ever since we switched to like a flat foot for the USAPL? Um, we had to play around with my foot angle a lot. So with like the flatter shoe, like the wrestling shoe. Um, my butt would come up a lot, and so we're switching to heels um, to get a little bit more leg drive, and then I'm going to keep slightly more forward, like a little bit more directly under my uh, knees to get more leg drive and prevent my butt from coming up. Uh, so what happens if you go with your feet like underneath you more? Because you made a post about that, and I feel like most people don't understand that. So with my feet under me more, it requires a little bit more hip mobility and then uh, like hip extension so the glutes want to fire more and they're more likely to come up off the bench whereas if yes. you're slightly more forward you can push slightly forward and use your quads instead of your actual glutes and that's why her heel comes up less in that shoe because it angles it to make it more quad drive instead of like you know ass drive kind of throws it onto the quads more that'd be nice Big chest, let's go. Yes. It's a what? It's a PR. It's a PR. <laughs> we gotta step up this close grip game. Chess Nicholson is disappointed. Hashtag don't be scared. Don't be scared. Uh, respect the least amount of range of motion. <laughs> no. Let's go. It was actually like really easy. And it's on pound motherfucking instability plate. <laughs> instability? I don't know if it works like that at those loads, but okay. So last week I hit the same weight, 331 for a triple at seven. Uh, but this week I'm aiming for this. I might get a little bit more, we'll see. I got to go kind of flat back. Um, arching bothered my C-spine the other day a little bit. It's funny, a lot of the powerlifters say how safe arching is. It's relatively safe, like it rarely ever induces injury, but you can fuck up your C-spine. I've seen it in multiple power lifters before. Um, so I'm going pretty flat back. I just gotta be kind of careful because that can irritate my pecs a little bit too. I did all 23 reps there. <laughs> so I'm actually supersetting these to save time. It's a nice speedy day. It also helps actually conserve my energy. So I don't do like all my back downs on bench or deadlift before I get to the top set of that one. You gotta do little tricks if you do utilize high volume and SVD type days. <laughs> Fuck! 
hate when that bitch go back. Okay? Yeah, you look pretty. I was a little angry at that set. <laughs> I'm feeling fucking wrecked with fatigue. Like, my fitness feels high, but I'm doing, I just did triple the debit volume that I've ever done in the last, like, five months this last week. And it's my intro to this volume, so I'm feeling fucking pretty wrecked, but it's time to work. Um, I'm doing my back down on bench now, so I hit my top set on bench and then got to my top set on deadlift. That way I don't do all this volume on bench and arching my back and stuff before I hit my deads. Uh, I got an AMRAP here followed by some close grip work. Um, I'm doing a lot of minimal bench volume because of some old injuries. I'm basically just broken as fuck and trying to work around it. Captain RP9, about like an eight and a half, but just kind of playing it safe there. I'm doing those for high threshold motor unit recruitment, so problem with sub max training, especially with the bench press. If you have a lot of sets that aren't close to failure, this puts me a lot closer to failure. And then I get in my real volume after that, like even more reps in a close grip bench style. That way I save my pecs a little bit because they get injured. So it's like I get one really good, efficient set out of that AMRAP. And it's some light volume close grip. Are you sponsored by Lulu Lemon now? Yeah. The whole outfit I'm a, is I'm a Lulu. Bitch, you know, because I compete USAPL, I have to maintain like the elitist status. You know, like you know, using a Ohio Power Bar. Got my Rogue plates. You know, I got, I got. I don't know. No, so you need like you need like a bandana. Yeah. One of the American well, I need, bandanas. I need to wear like all USAPL gear. Yeah. I still have my Rod Nats. And an SVD shirt. belt. Yeah, SVD belt, SVD sleeves. I'm just like I'm always wearing my Rod Nats shirt. I never clean it because <laughs> like Sean Noriega sniffed it and he like he like he, he touched it. So I have to like maintain that fucking essence. So I, I want to squat like him. I just want to like, I want to do this. I can't, but I want to. Okay, hey, wait, wait, come back. Informative, always informative. Oh, shit. Okay, why are we doing pause deadlifts? What is the purpose of pause deadlifts? Yeah, you can restrict load. You can focus more on like tensioning it, technique overall. I mean, if you already have shitty technique on deads, then well, we'll fuck you because fix it. But pause deadlifts is a good way to fix it. I mean. It's probably one like, of the only movements that's like a variation that actually I think fixes technique you know what I mean yeah like like in the sense of like if you do it right well okay what's doing it right like pausing right off the floor and maintaining your position yep versus like I mean when it comes to form like some people go way too wide others go way too narrow I think like I mean I feel like you need to just find the the, the width in terms of like how far can you externally rotate? Yep. Because like if you if you're here and you break, but you're like you barely do this, then what the fuck are you doing? Just stop. Because like yeah, there's range of motion, but there's leverage versus range of motion. You need to find that middle ground. Yes. Well, you're you're like a narrow sumo puller because that's the only way you can really rotate out and get vertical. Because if you go wide, it kind of like stops you, right? And then you're kind of like you're like moderate. It looks extreme, but you're actually pretty moderate in your yeah, stance. I mean, you're not like my frame is so large, so relative to the bar, it looks like I'm like touching the plates. But really, I'm just like here. Yeah. That's what I did. Your pause was really good. So was yours. Time for your top set soon. So, are you still going? Yeah, I'm still going. Okay. So for pause deadlifts, you have to like understand why you're doing them too. Yeah. Like, it's different for everybody. So some people, their knees come in, some people don't sit into it well, some people like like lose their attention, whatever. So you have to Sorry, like... Sorry, you say lost tension? <laughs> That's an old Lost tension gang. So, so like you for instance, determine, like, if someone's back is rounding, what would you prescribe? Like, like what, like would you do beltless more? Probably. Yeah, because it's like gonna let them get more extended. This is where the belt kind of folds you over, right? And then if you're focused more on like external rotation, Probably gonna do like longer pauses, closer to the ground pauses, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so why, why comp deadlifts after the pause deadlifts? Teach the kids at home. Right. So I was doing. Are your thumbs dead? Yeah. Yeah. Pause, deadlifts, fucking tough. Um, pause, 
deadlifts for my top set to work on technique, kind of reduce overall load, and then a comp specific back offs to really ingrain that movement pattern that I worked on with my pause deadlifts. So basically the pauses help open up the hips, reinforce that pattern, get you kind of upright, and then you work on the comp pull after just to reinforce your actual competition style pull and work that same kind of more open pattern and you die of hook grip. Mm -hmm. I'm a fucking asshole. I'm gonna go scare my client who fell asleep. Gave this kid so much volume, he died. Literally. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Break your neck. Oh, you already did. <laughs> I already fucking did on the bench. Breaking it some more. So close grip Larson press. Oh, I'm tired. This is work. Tomorrow's an accessory day only. Thank God after this death SPD day. Uh, and I, I, dude, remember guys, my volume tolerance is really low. So this is a lot of volume for me. But I got two sets of five at about RP five or six. I just try to make them sub six basically. Easier volume here and then I'm done. This will be the first set. so smooth. Ah, all right, I'm ending the video there. You don't need to see my last set. Today's informative video is a little different style than usual, but hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm just trying to bang out more content because honestly, if I had to sit here, think, distract my workout with a really long, in-depth technique video that you guys are used to, I wouldn't have time to do that. I'm gonna still do that on the channel, but I'm also gonna splice in these quicker training vlogs with informative information as well, especially showing the Prime Fam and kind of why we're doing everything with each of them. Oh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that cringy shit that YouTubers tell you to do. We'll see you guys next time.